Hi, good morning and welcome to the Products in Focus. The US market staged a late recovery yesterday, closing at the top end of the range, uh, not able to really push beyond uh, the previous day's um, kind of high point there. But we had some decent construction data come out of the US. Um, we've obviously got ADP private payrolls coming out on Friday. Everybody's getting ready for non farm payrolls. Oh, sorry, ADP private payrolls on Wednesday. We've got uh, non farm payrolls coming on Friday. And we've got a whole host of uh, PPI and CPI European data due today. And uh, we obviously have had a rate cut over in uh, Australia as well to counter that uh, weaker uh, Chinese demand. So US there is still trying to poke his head above 17,361. Technicals are relatively flat and neutral. Um, there still seems to be a potential descending triangle formation here on the US 30, uh, but we're in the middle of some ranges right now, so uh, it could still go either direction. So looking at the UK 100, um, interesting candle formation. It was a lot lower yesterday to close in positive territory. Um, we've had quite a volatile session again. Looks to be that 67.71 is a, is a potential support level. Still eyeing up that all-time high at 69.06 um, with uh, the moves in FX you've seen um, the dollar kind of try and wrestle control a little bit not from the euro which we'll come back to in a second is looking increasingly likely that Greece is going to come to some sort of agreement with the eurozone regarding their debt um, which is helping to support your dollar in the short term so looking at Japan 225 negative day uh, on the back of the move we're seeing in dollar yen so still, people are still buying up a little bit of yen there bouncing off that 21 period SMA on the wrong side of potential support at 17,496 that's not so good but we've only just started the, uh, the session in the UK um, longer term potential resistance still remains at 17,306 technicals we've got a uh, bearish cross on the slow stochastic right there so it's adding pressure the RSI is neutral we've almost crossed over on the MACD so um, it might not be that surprising to see a little bit more pressure on the Asian markets um, but uh, the rate cut that we've seen in, um, in Australia coupled with the monetary stimulus that we're seeing in China and obviously the Bank of Japan doing its own potential stimulus uh, it might be relatively short-lived so looking at Japan 225 it's again crawling along at 117 spot 36 there's nothing else to talk about here it's been in consolidated pattern for quite some time uh, it's not changed in the last couple of days we've covered it so looking at crude oil west texas it's increased by about 10 percent in the last two sessions a uh, real strong short squeeze with many many traders now actually calling a floor on west texas uh, which is always a, a, a risky proposition to uh, to come out with, but certainly there's no denying that a 10% rise in two days is the best performance it's had for a long, long time. Um, you're probably looking at 51 as being the next potential short-term resistance. This was a spike that we saw here. Um, Longer term potential resistance is at 54, it's about 85. Uh, and we are at the top end of the range today, uh, but it's not following through with a lot of confidence. But you know, it's still early days, so uh, just keep an eye on that one there. Uh, certainly, it's not a, it's not uh, against moving five percent in the day, so just make make sure you're on the right side of that one. So moving on to um, on to gold, uh, still moving in the right direction. We're probably looking for a move above uh, thirteen hundred dollars there, uh, for as long as the uh, macro data in the U.S. keeps on coming out as slightly weaker than expected. Um, just be careful during ADP pirate payrolls and non-farm payrolls on Friday if you are one of these gold bugs out there. But certainly there seems to be some levels of support around about 12.73. Now, Euro dollar. Uh, we are consolidating around about one spot 13. 30. Uh, looking at the number of day charts, it's literally not doing anything. I think we're I think we're waiting for more of a view on the U.S. economy. So we need more U, uh, U.S. macro data to give us an idea. I'm not necessarily thinking that strong euro data is going to um, cause this to go shooting up. I think we just need to get a, a flavour of is is the U.S. actually having a bit more problems than what um, what the Fed would like it to have. Uh, is it more or less likely they're going to raise rates sooner rather than later? That's the big story about euro dollar right now, anyway. Because obviously, with the QE on there, the euro should be feeling that little bit weaker. But um, people don't want to uh, give the dollar too much credence because it already had such a fantastic rally. Um, a lot of that's already been priced in. So, cable uh, struggling a little bit more, incidentally, uh, against the, the weight of the uh, of the green bag. Longer term potential support still stands at one spot 48.13 and resistance at one spot 
85. So economic data wise, uh, as we mentioned, we've already had a, a series of, of information come out today in regards to rate cut in, uh, in Australia and everything else. Um, we've got Eurozone PMI and um, we've got uh, auto industry sales. To be honest, it's all about Wednesday. We've got a huge host of PMI data, retail sales, uh, ADP private payrolls, precursors to non-farm payrolls, uh, US PMI, and you've got your crude oil inventories, which, uh, if you remember, uh, last week was much higher than expected. Um, and it'd be interesting to see if West Texas crude is still rallying up uh, come tomorrow at 3.30. As ever, keep your eye on the chart forum. Make insights part of your layout going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.